Hello, boys and girls, and Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Again, with the game reactions and takes frolic for, what was last night? May 9th. We're going to look at those. I'm going to give you my reaction. I got some unpleasant things to say about some of the teams. But before I do, and after you sub up to the channel right now so you can get all this fine frolic on a regular basis. I'm going to talk about Barry Trotz and the firing of Barry Trotz by the New, of the New York Islanders. Um, Lamorello, this is the oddest move ever. Man. Like, What does the guy got to do? He brought you to the semifinals twice in a row. He won the cup just before that for not for the Islanders, but he said, the old, they need a new voice in the room, right? Okay, so a Hall of Famer voice in the room wasn't working for you? May not have been Lamorello. It may have been ownership because they want to go a different direction, but I don't buy it. I bet you it's Tortorello that gets put in there. Uh, I, 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 don't, I can say that maybe ownership just said they wanted a scapegoat. Maybe it was a sponsor thing or something like that. All I know is that uh, you don't fire Barry Trotz. I said that when they were fired by Nashville, they regretted it. Capitals regretted it, although they're doing pretty good with lambs in there. But Islanders will probably regret it, depending on who they put in. I think it's going to be Tortorella, which is just, it's a different voice saying pretty much the same thing, I guess. We'll find out if it is or not. Maybe, they'll, maybe they want to play an offensive game that's entertaining. That's the the one thing about Barry Trotz. It's hard to watch, let's face it. The guy's successful, but it's kind of hard to watch. It's possible that ownership is going, we we really need to get entertaining here. And then you got guys like Ball, Barzal, Wallstrom. It's frustrating for a young player who's really offensive that has to learn a physical defensive system that uh, Trotz puts in place that just so happens to win. All right, that's what I got to say about that. Tell me what you think, Islanders fans. I'll give you this in the chat. I'll give you this in sub up and chat, and I'll give this over to Facebook is what I'm trying to say. Okay, first game. Let's look at it. Kings versus Oilers. And uh, there's going to be a theme in what I'm about to say here. Quite simply, you are not a championship team. If you don't smell blood and take it, and the Oilers, I don't know, they, they didn't smell the blood. They weren't close to the blood. They didn't even realize the blood was around. Last night was the moment where you could take an advantage of the rest of the teams in the league. You could get up 3-1 right now. Come out hard on a team that you just knocked down 7-2 to the night before. You could just come barreling out against them. Play the speed game that you can play. Play hard on the stick. And if you lose your next one, you know, put it all out there. Get up 3-1. Then you're going home. No. Absolute bloody garbage is what they played. It was pathetic. I was doing the color commentary for Peyton on the radio. Check out Peyton on the radio, by the way. It's one of the best play-by-play -play guys there are out there. Uh, I mean, we can talk about Grundstrom scored. You talk about whether that goal should have been allowed. Who cares? Who cares? The Oilers were playing like, like it was a Sunday afternoon jaunt out in the park it was pathetic to oh, the only people the only, there was only one line that carried any possession and you know what it was it was the mcdavid line mcdavid played like a beast i'm sorry man if i'm mcdavid right after seeing that performance last night if i'm mcdavid like it's seriously going through my head whether i'm staying here or not because you they're so far away from winning a cup, the Edmonton Oilers. True cup, true cup contenders. Okay, you got Toronto. 
you can say, well, they cropped the bet against Tampa Bay. Yeah, but it was Tampa freaking Bay. This is the LA Kings who are without Drew Doughty right now. Duncan Keith and Tyson Berry shouldn't see another freaking blade to the ice if this team had any depth whatsoever. Keith was an absolute garbage, a basket case, piece of crap, useless. Any word you can come up with that sounds, that's a synonym for that, you would be accurate. He was horrible. And he has been all year. Barry mostly has as well. And he was just as bad last night. But everybody played poorly. Uh, Even Kulak made some pretty bad, pretty poor moves. I don't know where their head's at. Except for Mike Smith, of course. 42 of 45 shots for a 40-year-old. You know, you think Mike Smith might be in that room right now? A guy who's been around as long as he has that wants to win a cup, going, excuse, what was, what was that? You, you think you, you want to be, you say you want to be a champion, Stanley Cup champion, and you come with your head, what, on your mom, thinking of your moms right now or something? Absolutely pathetic. LA Kings, give them credit, they played hard. They came out with a different game. They came out, knew that they didn't do well in their last game. Uh, you know, pretty much a grab bag roster on defense with Mata and Anderson, old man Edler, but they played with some heart. I mean, I can't say they played stupendous because the Oilers played so bad. A peewee team would look stupendous. I mean, they wouldn't even have beat an AHL team last night. No heart whatsoever. Nothing. Can't even get yourself going in the second or third. All right, LA Kings fans, I know. You know what? LA Kings fans are going to get mad at me right now and say, well, you know, we just outplayed them and they couldn't get going because, because, because. No, I'm sorry. Yes, you did outplay them. But if you think that, you know, that is the, I don't know, if the Edmonton Oilers play like that for the rest of this series and gift you the next round, beautiful, beautiful. But this Edmonton Oilers team can be way better than that. And you can't be this bad against an L.A. team in that spot. Seriously. the No heart of a champion here. None. It was terrible. That's what I got to say about that. Tell me what you think, L.A. Kings fan. I didn't really say much talk. You know, Dano was beautiful. Uh, Kopitar played hard. Like that, Moore has been fantastic for you guys. You guys have more heart in your big toe than the Edmonton Oilers have in their whole freaking team, L.A. I'll tell you that right now. All right. Edmonton's my team, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Pathetic. Next. Uh, yeah, we were just talking about it, Lightning and uh, the Maple Leafs. And, yeah, the Lightning came out to play. I'm not going to give Toronto the crapper like I did Edmonton because you're playing against Tampa Bay, and it's been going back and forth. Uh, yeah, you got blown out. Um, honestly, it was mostly goaltending. Campbell just wasn't playing well. Uh, the Leafs can certainly play better than that, but... I wouldn't say that they – I'll say they, they played a lot better than the Edmonton Oilers did from what I saw of the game. Uh, the Lightning can do that. They can turn it around. They had – the Lightning are 17 now and 0 after losing a game. They haven't won back-to-back games or lost back-to-back games in 17 straight times that they lost. This is two-time championship team that came out and you knew we're going to be putting out 100% in this in this game tonight. And uh, Toronto does have a beef, though, and they have a fair beef, that John Tavares, 13 minutes and 50 seconds he's playing right now. He's He's got to be hurt. He just looks terrible out there. Nylander has played well. 
you know, he's probably had his best playoffs we've seen in some time. Uh, but and overall, and, the, you know, the score, you had empty netters that really ran the score up quite a bit. But Toronto, I didn't feel like they gave up in the game. Where Edmonton, they didn't get started in the game, didn't do anything in the game. Toronto, I feel a lot better that they're going to go back home and uh, put out a pretty good outing here. I, I found that they haven't given up the whole time. The problem is, is they just simply need better goaltending. And I don't think it's going to happen. I think goaltending is going to let them down this year. I think Tampa Bay is going to win. And it's if they had top-notch number one goaltending, like a top 10 goaltender in the league, they probably win this series. But it's goaltending that's probably going to let them down. That's what I think. What do you guys think, Leafs fans? As far as Tampa, they, they do. This is what they do. They don't lose back-to-back. Uh, they came back. Victor Hedman had a monster. Uh, Corey, that Corey Perry line was rolling with Maroon. And they I think they both, did they both get a goal? Yeah. When you got that Maroon and Perry line going for this Tampa Bay team, you're probably going to be rocking the reservation, as they like to say. Uh, you, it's going to be tough to beat them. Their four lines are absolutely crushing. Um, and they're just getting the ball rolling. So I ain't going into Toronto. Toronto's going to give her a goal, go. A lot of people think this is going to go seven. And I think maybe it could. But I'll tell you what, Campbell's got to have a way better effort than this. You got to steal a game. You got to steal a game. You got to have goaltenders have to steal games in the playoffs. And I think they're going to have to do it in Tampa Bay. And honestly, I, I, I don't know if Campbell's got it in him. I don't know. And if if Tampa Bay's got that ball rolling like they can, they got their groove on uh, with their depth, I doubt very much that Toronto has much of a chance in this series, even if it goes seven. I And I don't think it's going to go seven. I think Tampa's going to go in Toronto and win there, and they're going to come home and win again. That's what I think. So what do you think, Tampa fans, Toronto fans? Uh, am I talking out of my butt? Well, I'm hearing a lot of things about Justin Hole. Uh, there was a, a Simmons that everybody hates came out and said, asked, actually asked Sheldon Keefe, why did you have your worst defenseman out there at a certain time? And uh, everybody lost their minds. That's what Simmons does. That's how he gets known, man. And the more we, like I'm talking about him right now, because I don't mind him. He's just making a living. But the more you're angry and you blah, blah, blah about it, the more Simmons, more money goes in his pocket. So if you don't like Simmons, your best bet, don't say anything. Simmons would hate that. Okay. Next game. But I will say this, though. Sorry, I won't go to the next game. That just like uh, just like with Edmonton, Toronto. That's a place where you got to kill. You got to kill, but you got to have a goaltender. I think the goaltender goaltending is the main problem there. Come on, what the heck. Here we go. Blues versus Wild. Um, I, I'm. This isn't Wild. Minnesota. This was a terrible performance. Um, I know the Blues came out hard, but you know they're going to come hard, out hard first period. I don't understand this. You know they're coming out, out hard first period. You have an opportunity to take a pretty good advantage, a pretty good advantage in this uh, series. Because now it's 2-2. You could have went up 3-1. Now let's look at St. Louis's roster on defense here. Scandella played a minute and 30 seconds. He was injured. He shouldn't even have been on the ice. You got Santini. He's gone too. He only played three minutes. Oh, because they put Perunovic in there. Rosen, a rookie kid in Perunovic, who is, I don't know, is he not? Is he really well? Like, I'm sure he just magically shows up now that they have no defenseman. 
Um, Pareko Falk playing 30 minutes a night in Mikola. And Bennington in net. Bennington had a solid game, didn't see that coming. But it was their opportunity. Smelling blood. Get it done, man. It is the time. Kaprizov played his balls off that game. I honestly don't think Minnesota played that bad. Not as bad as, like, say, Edmonton against L.A., but it was just such a huge opportunity dropped. That being said, you're going back to Minnesota now. And uh, with that that defense the way it is, I, I'm not saying Minnesota gets the next game, I'm pretty sure. I, I just, they put everything into this game. They got to travel now. So does Minnesota, but they got to travel. And with a beat up defense, is Bennington going to have two good games in a row? I mean, could. Wouldn't it be really amazing? Bennington just craps the bed all regular season. And then he comes in and the play, he's just, it turns out he's just a playoff guy. He's just like regular seasons, like, yeah, 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 whatever. Who so you go play? I got into it. And he's one of those guys that just rocks the playoffs every time you put him in there. Could be. Could be. I wouldn't put any money on that, though. And you got your one-shot shooters like Perron. Pot, I mean, did he get two? Yeah, he got two. I think one of them was empty netter, wasn't it? But uh, those are always nice to have. Kairu comes back this in after you know fading down the regular season. He's got three goals already. Got two in this game. Those are huge. Those are one shot shooters that can kill you, and that's really kind of what happened with St. Louis. And and, uh, and Minnesota doesn't have that quite as much. But I really think they'll eat up their defense when they go back to Minnesota. Not a Minnesota fan. I don't care who wins this series. By the way, the great Wayne Gretzky picked St. Louis to make the Western Finals. So what do you guys think about that, Minnesota fan, St. Louis fan? Sub yourself up to my YouTube channel. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. I just think Santini and Rosen and those guys are just not going to cut it here. I uh, I think Minnesota will end up winning this, and it's kind of too bad because the St. Louis Blues put together a pretty good squad. But I can't see that defense being out of hold, and I can't. I'm not going to roll the dice on Bennington to keep on playing like this. I imagine he'll be in the next game as well. All right, next the final game. Bruins versus Hurricanes, and it's just the same theme. Smell and blood, man. The Bruins were without McAvoy here. No McAvoy. Carolina. No McAvoy, no Lindholm. Their two best defensemen are not in the lineup. You've got Pesci, Slavin, Shea, D'Angelo. And D'Angelo, would you shut up? Already? This is, this is not a time for personal battles, a-hole. Seriously. What are you doing out there? Waking up the Boston Bruins? You're going to... They were... The Boston Bruins were like floating around. And they didn't have much emotion at all. And you all of a sudden, yeah, 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 yeah. Getting in personal fights with the players? Are you freaking crazy? That was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but overall, the overall performance by Carolina was pretty meh when you consider they had Boston by the throat with two poor defensemen. No, without two defensemen in their lineup, they're two main defensemen. That's what I'm trying to say. You know, Riley, it's okay. Carlo hasn't had a strong year. Forbert and Brown and Clifton? You can't beat this team on the road? Like, seriously? With the type of... Your system just completely breaks down at this time? Are you freaking serious? Now, Brenda Moore must... He, I, and I don't think he does this too often. But I'm pretty sure Brenda Moore 
tore the paint off that dressing room after this game. Like, these are places where championships kill. Champion, where champions kill. The Pittsburgh Penguins against the New York Rangers with the third stringer. That's what champions do, Carolina. That's what champions do. The Boston Bruins have done it before. But that being said, the Boston Bruins, without McAvoy, without their two best defensemen, come out and bring it. They bring it. Bergeron played unbelievable. That whole top line just said, you know what? You may beat us, but we're not beating us. We're not beating us here. Wouldn't you love to see the Edmonton Oilers, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Carolina Hurricanes have that attitude if you're a fan of them? Boston Bruins may not win a cup this year, but they embody what it means to crush it when you need to crush it. To only lose in important situations if you're actually beat. Now, the first two games against Carolina, you would say, well, they didn't look too great there. Yeah, but this was game three. This is when the money's on the... This is game four, actually. This, this is when the money's on the table. And they bring it. Great teams may lose two in the first, you know, take the first two games, take a while to get to, like, you know, know how they're going to attack their opponent. But when the chips are down, this is what great teams do. I'll go as far as to say that the LA Kings will win a cup before the Edmonton Oilers will. Because I've seen from the LA Kings, they don't necessarily have the talent right now, but they bring it. And when they don't bring it, if they don't bring it in one game, the next game, they're bringing it full force, man. And uh, I'm sorry, but I I'm not seeing it from Carolina. I'm not seeing it from the Florida Panthers. We'll find out tonight. Uh, Toronto has a history of not seeing it, and they're trying to create it. It's what championship champions do. Tell me what you think, Boston Bruins fan. By the way, Swayman, beautiful. Beautiful. Love that. I love, don't you love watching these hotshot kids go off? It's like you're seeing the next Patrick Waugh or Broder or whatever. Ottinger in Dallas, Swayman in Boston. Certainly not Ranta in Carolina, is it? All right. That's my full 42. That's all I got to say. Tell me, Boston Bruin fans, Carolina fans, what you think about what I just said. What more do you got to say about this? Uh, do you, how much, how much are you, uh, what do you, what do you think about your team? You see the series that's going on, all of those things. Sub up, let me know in the comment section. That's my full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye.